enjoy different seasons on earth and the change in seasons is best portrayed on trees. For instance, when we see new young leaves growing, then we know it is spring. During summer, the leaves turn dark green and the tree increase in its volume. And when it is autumn, the leaves turn yellow and they eventually fall off. During winter, the tree is almost barren. So, by looking at the trees, we can understand what season it is. We enjoy different seasons like spring, summer, autumn and winter. Now, sometimes summer is also accompanied by heavy rainfall. So, these are the different seasons that we enjoy on our planet. But what leads to the formation of these seasons? Let's find out. We know our earth and other planets revolve around the sun. Now, these celestial bodies do not move haphazardly or randomly. Rather, they move in a well-organized manner and in a fixed path around the sun. Now, this fixed path in which the planets revolve around or move around the sun is called the orbit. So, orbit is a fixed path in which the planets move around the sun. Now, this particular movement is known by a name. Do you know what is this movement called? The movement of the earth and other planets around the sun in an orbit is called revolution. The speed of one revolution of the earth around the sun is 30 km per second or 1,80,000 km per hour. Now, the earth takes 365 days or one year to complete one revolution. See, this is Sam. His birthday is on 29th Feb. Now, Sam is sad because in the current year, that is on 2023, February has only 28 days. So, he has to wait for the next year that is 2024 to celebrate his birthday on 29th February. Poor Sam, he cannot celebrate his birthday on the current year that is on 2023. Now, if earth revolves around the sun in a fixed time that is 365 days approximately, then why do some years have an extra day in the month of February? Well, if you remember, I just mentioned a while ago that earth takes one year or 365 days approximately to complete one revolution. But this is not true. The exact time of one revolution by the earth around the sun is not 365 days. Rather, it is 365.25 days. So, one revolution of the earth around the sun is 365 and 0.25 days. So, one revolution is equal to 365.25 days. Now, if there are four revolutions, then what will be the total time of revolution? So, in case of four revolutions, we will add the total time four times. That is, 365.25 days will be added four times. Now, we can write this expression as... 365 plus 365 plus 
so we will write 365 together and then we will group 0.25 so there are 4 times 0.25 so we will write 0.25 4 times so this is the expression that we will get now we can also write this expression as 365 into 4 because here 365 has been added 4 times so we can write this as 365 into 4 plus 0 0.25 into 4 so since 0 0.25 has been added 4 times so we can write this as 0 0.25 into 4 so this expression can also be written as this expression that is 4 revolutions is equal to 365 into 4 plus 0 0.25 into 4 days now since we know that one year is equal to 365 days so we can also write this expression as 4 years because if we add 365 days 4 times then we will get 4 complete years so 365 into 4 is equal to 4 years and 0 0.25 into 4 will be equal to 1 day so the total time of 4 revolutions is equal to 4 years and an extra day so as i just mentioned 4 revolutions is equal to 4 years and an extra day now this extra day is added to the fourth year and this fourth year which has an extra day is known as leap year so in a leap year we have 365 days plus one extra day which comes from adding 0.25 into 4 times so this extra day is added to the leap year and therefore a leap year has 366 days and this extra day is often added to the month of february so as we just calculated the fourth year which is also the leap year has 366 days now this leap year or the year with an extra day comes after every four years because this extra time that is 0 0.25 days which is not added to first second and third year but it is added to the fourth year so leap year comes after every four years and it has 366 days so this entire calculation shows how leap year has 366 days and why it comes after every four years consecutively and also remember that the time of one revolution is not 365 days rather it is 365.25 days and this extra 0.25 days is added to the leap year after every four years now before we proceed with our lesson let us try to answer this question a leap year comes after every four years one year 24 hours or 366 days yes the correct answer is four years 
we just calculated that leap year comes after every 4 years and it has 366 days. So, the correct answer is 4 years. We know the earth revolves around the sun in a fixed path called orbit. But the orbit of the earth is not circular, rather it is an elliptical path something like this. Now as the earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical path, the distance between the earth and the sun varies throughout the year. Now let us consider four points on this elliptical path say x, y, m and n. Now at which of these points do you think the earth will be closest to the sun? Yes, as it is clearly evident from the diagram among these points that is x, m, n and y the point at which the earth is closest to the sun is point x. So point x symbolizes the closest position of the earth with respect to the sun. Now this point is known as perihelion. So perihelion is a point on the orbit where the earth is closest to the sun. Now perihelion is a Greek word where peri means near and helion means sun. So the nearest position of the earth with respect to the sun is known as perihelion. So perihelion is a point on the orbit where the earth is closest to the sun and this closest distance between the sun and the earth is 147 million kilometers. Now among these four points that is y, m, n and x which point do you think is farthest to the sun? Yes as we can clearly see from the diagram point y on the orbit is farthest from the sun. So point y symbolizes the farthest position of the earth from the sun. Now this point on the orbit where the earth remains farthest from the sun is known as aphelion. Now aphelion is again a Greek word where apo means far away and helion means sun. So aphelion is a point on the orbit where the earth remains the farthest from the sun and this farthest distance of the earth from the sun is 152 million kilometers. So the closest distance of the earth and the sun is 147 million kilometer and the farthest distance of the earth from the sun is 152 million kilometer. Now this closest position is also known as perihelion and it occurs on a particular day that is on 3rd January. While the farthest position of the earth from the sun is aphelion and it occurs on 4th July. So on 4th July every year the earth is farthest from the sun and on 3rd January every year the earth is nearest or closest to the sun. So in today's video we first understood the meaning of revolution. Revolution refers to the movement of the earth around a fixed path or orbit. Then we also learned that the fixed path on which the earth moves around the sun that is orbit is not circular rather it is an elliptical path. And due to the elliptical orbit of the earth the distance between the earth and the sun varies throughout the year. The closest position of the earth with respect to the sun is known as perihelion. 
while the farthest distance of the earth from the sun is known as aphelion. In our next video, we will discuss about solstice. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5,000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now